Welcome to the channel. So today is the day that I finally get to start assembling my Rima RS31G sawmill. So I'm going to try to walk you through assembly. I've never done this before. Hopefully we can learn together and hopefully this video is going to help some of you guys uh, know how to assemble your sawmill. So let's get to it. So if you missed my unboxing video and you want to check that out, I should have a playlist up for you. So you can see me taking everything out of the crate and what to expect when you get your sawmill. So to get started with assembly, they recommend having some blocks or something to assemble your rails up on. Now probably ideally in a perfect world you would set up your mill um, in its permanent location. Um, I'm choosing not to do that because I want to put my mill back there and it's a bit of a slope and well basically I'm just not ready yet and I wanted to actually see the mill so I can pick a really good home for it and get a good base and everything. Anyway, so for now, I'm doing it on my driveway on some braces and pieces of wood. Anyway, you're going to want to get it up off the ground because you're going to want to be able to reach underneath the rails. So, I have six of these brackets. Uh, if you didn't get any extensions, you're just going to get four. Now, they are all the same. And you'll notice... Uh, the, I can't think of what these are called, but the bunks. Um, this one does not have any brackets for a log stop on the back. And then we've got some here that do have these holes for the brackets. So you're going to want to make sure that you put this one without a bracket on the left side of your mill, the end, because you're not going to need a bracket there because that's where your saw head's going to sit. And in my case, I have three of those. So I'm going to put the other one like that at the far end. And then the third one, I don't know why they didn't, why they don't send all but two. Um, like this, like it seems like you'd want mostly these, but anyway, I ordered the extension and they sent me three without the bracket. Yeah. So one's going to go at the left end. And then the other two I'm going to put at the far end. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to be cutting too many really long logs. So I'd rather have them all in the middle. I've seen different ways of people doing it. Like some will skip a bunk like more towards the middle. I don't want to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, and I've also seen, I think like the woodland mills. It has some with four holes and some with two. I mean, for the Remo... All of them are like this. They all have four, four holes. Um, because the idea is when you intersect, when you're joining your bottom brackets, like here, you're gonna do that, and then the other bracket's gonna join under there. So it comes with this big old bag of bolts, and this is the only bag of nuts and bolts <laughs> that came with the mill. Now I was a bit worried that maybe they forgot something, but it looks like all the other pieces. At least what I can tell already has the bolts like loosely through them so in some cases I might just have to unbolt something and you're gonna want to just finger tighten everything right now don't tighten everything up like crazy I tell you I'm gonna do finger tight I'm just loose to doing it for now because you want to make sure you get everything square and straight before you reef everything up oh and if it isn't obvious these guys one side's longer than the other so the long side's gonna go down okay so yeah here you just meet them in the middle Left hole is this side, right hole is that side. And one other thing, while I fiddle with this, make sure that you put all of these stops on the same side of the mill. <laughs> you don't want them on either side, like the front and the back. They all go toward the back of the mill. And as you probably know, you cut from left to right, so the left side is where your mill is going to start. 
if you're ever not sure which is the front and which is the back, just keep that in mind. You'll be cutting from left to right. And as far as I know, the bolts that you attach these plates with are the same ones you'll do the logs just in the middle, or the log bunks in the middle. So yeah, you're just gonna do this a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. That's what it looks like underneath. Just like so. It's Saturday now and I reconsidered my idea of building on the driveway and move and then moving it after. Instead, I decided to set it up in its home so I don't have to move it. It just seems like it's gonna to be too big and heavy to move. So I bought some six by six pressure treated ground contact rated posts. Uh, got them pretty level and now I am assembling the frame back here where I will have my mill. Uh, really simple to do this part. Just kind of continue with what I was doing before using something to elevate the tracks up off the ground or now my beams. And these nuts here are the bolts. They are an 18 millimeter size. So I just got a few more to put on. Just remember to only put it on hand tight. Well, not even hand tight, just loose. And we will get these tracks assembled. All right, so I got the track all assembled now, just hand tight with the nuts. Uh, so you'll notice on the one end, I've got the, the stop so the saw head doesn't fall off. Only put them on the one end and not on the other because you're gonna need to have them off once you set the the track or the saw head up on the tracks. So I'm keeping them off on this end. And I'm gonna throw the feet on. So on all the joints, you're gonna wanna put a foot on either side. And you can look at the instruction manual for how you want to do the rest of the feet. Um, I actually bought six extra feet just for some extra support. So I'm going to have a few extra. Uh, you don't need too much on this side over here since no logs are going to be sitting on the far left bunk. And probably not a lot of weight's going to hit this one just because the end of the log will probably be really close to it or you might even miss that bunk entirely. All right, so now I got all the feet on. So I'm gonna pull out my brackets that are lifting up the saw head. And then we can try and square things up. So as you can probably see here, I'm gonna to have to work to adjust my beams so that they fit properly underneath the feet. So I got a bit of work to do just arranging this. Um, If I would have done all my work beforehand, my prep work, could have avoided this. So you're going to want looks like about 42 inches from the edge of your post to the edge of your post. So to do the saw head, you take your piece marked B. And obviously you're not doing this, you're just doing this with it still laying down. Not on the mill or anything. Just stick that in there. Now we'll take piece A. It's going to go on the right side. Got to get it in the right position to get it through here. There we go. Perfect. All right, so once we got those two pieces in, we're gonna take our two roller pieces and put them on these posts here. And these have the wheels that'll run along the tracks. So there's a left and a right. Uh, these two pieces are not the same. So you're gonna want it so that the head of the nut is facing the outside of the machine. This is the one for the left side here. So we're going to have to take these two nuts off here. Like so. And it's going to go like this. 
and these two holes will line up with that. So we'll just slide that on there. And you're just gonna lightly put the nuts on, don't tighten them up. Okay, like that, then we'll do the other side. There, so you can see how we got that now. Heads of the bolts on the outside. And these pieces are also a little bit different. You can see on this side, we've got this thing here, and it's not here on the right one. So once we got these two pieces on, we're gonna wanna make sure that we push these up all the way. See how this here is right up against. See that for both sides. Boom, boom, they're both up. And next we're gonna tip this, tip this up. Make sure that nothing's caught before you do this. It's not that hard to tip up. I wasn't sure how hard that was going to be to tip it up because of all the weight. It's pretty easy. All right, so next we're going to put these two upright pieces into this side and this side. So we got to take these nuts off both sides and then mount them in. So these two pieces are different. The side with the pulley on it is going to go on the left. So we'll be facing inside. We'll get it backwards. way all right yeah we got the piece with the pulley here gonna go on the left side loosey goosey Yeah, on this side here, just watch for this thing. You might have to move it if it's in your way. Easy work. And we'll do this side. Don't forget to run the bolts from the outside towards the end, just so it looks better when you're done. So you don't have heads of bolts and nuts on the same side unnecessarily All right So you can see now we got the uprights on and at this point they're not attached yet all good And we got the pulley on the inside so That's what it's looking like so far So next we're gonna take put this piece here up on to the front. So as usual, we've got to take off the nuts first. It's kind of nice that they have these nuts installed, even though you have to take them out, just because then you don't have to like second guess if you have the right ones, you have to pull them out of a bag. So take these three off. I think that one stays on. Okay, so you do have to take this one off as well. So 
you got a washer, and it goes through, and then you got this, 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 washer, final knot. So I'm just going to lay it like this, that way I can put it back on properly. So we need to get these holes to line up with those. Might take some persuasion. Oh, my word. All right. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna put the bolts back in here. And for now, we don't have to worry about the the pulley wheel. We're gonna put that in later, um, after we've Loctited everything up. All right, so it was a bit of adventure. I finally got this on. I didn't film it, it was a bit, it seemed like it might be a bit tedious. So, what I did eventually, I got the bottom bolt on. I put the bottom bolt on both sides. So that is the long one. Cause you don't want it to fall down on you. So yeah, I got the bottom bolt on. Then I did this one and on the other side, then you can put these two on. And yeah, so the long bolt goes on the bottom on both sides. Yeah, and just leave them all super loose cause we're gonna be going on to tightening and lock tightening them very soon. And on the outside of this side, um, I would not have had to take these two off. So you can leave those two little guys on. So that's what it should be looking like now. And next we're gonna put this piece down here, up onto here. Shouldn't be difficult. I think we just take these pieces off and put them back on. So I'll pop that on. So this piece is going to go up on here and the holes. So one half has holes. That's the side that's going to go up on top. And there we go. So next we're ready to start lock tightening the head up. That's what it's looking like so far. You're doing great. It's not too hard, is it?
She's on. So at this point we're ready to start loctiting things up, uh, tightening it. And I got the blue Loctite uh, medium strength. So if you ever need to loosen something, you'll still be able to. Could be a bonus. So to start off with, we're gonna do one of these. That'll tighten it up. Then we'll do the other side. One of these, tighten it up. Then do these four, and then we'll move on to the bottom. And these are a 12 mil wrench. And we'll do one over here, snug it up. And we can move on to the other two, and then we'll go to the bottom. All right, so next we're gonna hit these two and then those two, and do the same on the other side. Next, we're gonna hit these two and these two, do the other side, then come down to the bottom and loosen up this one, and this one, and do the same on the other side. And then lastly for tightening, you're gonna wanna loosen this one up and the one on the other side for the wheel. That's a 19 mil. So next we're gonna put the wheels onto the long bolts on the left and right side. So the wheel you'll notice has a C-clip on the one side and on the other. First you're gonna put a washer on, then take your wheel, C-clip towards the outside of the, towards the machine, towards the outside, then your second washer and then your nut and i believe this is the lock nut here and that's i think a 19 mil size so tighten that and do that for the other side well next we're gonna install the crank up into here so there is a bolt here it's gonna be this way so this bolt is gonna go through this hole here that hole and there's a plate here, there's a hole, and that's gonna bolt onto there. And before we put it up, in my case, I got some cables wrapped around. We're gonna unwrap those. So there's a lock one here. So we won't have to Loctite this one. Right, so we got that one attached there that one has a lock nut on it this one here we're gonna lock tight so we don't need to lock tight that one since it's got a lock nut this one we do need to so just so you can see from the back what I was doing I was attaching that nut right there and now we're just attaching this one right here so it's only those two, two bolts that are holding on the crank. So next we're gonna just Loctite this one and snug it up. Don't go crazy tight or you're gonna bend this, but you could and it'll squeeze really hard on the post here and your head won't go up and down properly. So just snug that one up. Just make sure this one's snug as well. That's a lock nut. So you don't have to Loctite it, but just make sure it's snug and do the same on the other side. All right, so next we're gonna route the cables to lift the head. Hopefully you can see this, okay? So there's two eyelets here. So we're gonna take the one that's closest to the middle of the machine. That's gonna go around, up and around the top pulley, then around this pulley, up over here, and then we're going to attach it under this bolt. So we just take this lock nut off. Check it 
try to pull that on. All right, so once you got that on there, I'm gonna have to use some muscle and tighten this up. It's a 17 mil. Okay, so now we will go to the other eyelet, so the one closest to the edge of the outside of the machine. It's gonna come here. This one's gonna go around the bottom wheel, then over to here. So same as the other one, but instead of going up there, this one's gonna loop back around and go through there and come up and over here. And then we'll attach it onto here, same as the other side. So let's just run over that again. So the eyelet closest to the outside of the machine, that one goes around, around the bottom wheel here, comes back, goes around the bottom wheel again, of course. Then it comes around and back over to the other side of the machine, around there, up over there, and down to there. And the one closest to the middle of the machine, it goes around the top pulley, then it goes around the top pulley over here on the outside, up over there, and down to there. So now on the front of the mill, we're going to loosen these two up and lock tight these as well. If the head's too low for you to get at them, and you'll do that for the other side as well. Your crank should not be working, so you can crank it. It'll show you which way to go up. So you can just crank it up a bit. And if it doesn't want to go up, maybe double check what you did. I don't shouldn't take like he-man strength, but it does take a bit of a bit of muscle just to get it to go up. So raise it up and then you can tighten those four nuts up and lock tight them. We're getting closer to cutting, so next we can open up the cover. Where the blade is so there's a latch here just pop that up get flip that out of the way underneath there's one as well just do that open it up here's where the magic happens as they say so you want to make sure that these brushes are hitting the wheel so that one's already just kissing it and this one is backed off so Loosen this up. Let me just show you how these things work. Um, I had a coworker once who didn't know how they work. Um, so if you lift them up, you can spin them while you're lifting up and they won't turn it. Then we let them snap back in. If you turn it, it'll loosen. So yeah, I had a coworker who for years had a machine that had this handle and he would get it so far and it would hit something. He didn't realize if you would have just loosened or pulled it up, you can turn it. You probably already knew that, but just thought I'd point that out. So we got this hooked up, now we're gonna... attach the lubrication hose down to by the blade. So that's just going to go down here and just tighten that on there. We're going to move this over here so that doesn't, you don't want that hanging below the blade. That would not be good. So the handle goes on the back corner piece and it'll go so that the top of the bolts are facing up and you can pick the height that you want to set it at. So to adjust the blade guide you're going to loosen this nut here and that will allow this unit to move so you can allow you to slide it back and forth. So there is a bearing in here. So you're going to want to tighten this up so that there's about 
and there'll be a 16th inch gap between the back of the blade and the bearing. So you don't want this to ride on the bearing all the time. Just when there's some tension on it, I guess. We're gonna loosen these two as well. This is just the height of the blade guides, the height. So I'm just gonna make it just lightly touch and I'll let this one just drop down on. So another thing you're gonna wanna check is just to make sure that, sorry, I'll back up on the engine here, on the, the blade side. This bracket here should be far left. See how there's an oval hole? Just make sure it's slid all the way over there and just double check that these bolts are tight. You're also gonna to wanna to check to make sure that the distance of your blade to your bunk is the same both on the right side and the left so that it's cutting straight. So you can use a measuring tape and just measure either side, or in my case, I use a block so I can see on this side. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but it's nicely fits under there. On this side, there's a bit of a gap, so I'm gonna to have to lower this side or raise the right side. So to adjust the height of your blade, you're just gonna to wanna to lower the saw head all the way down so that it takes the tension off the cables. And then you can just Go to underneath here and pick the appropriate cable that you want to adjust and you can uh, loosen or tighten this one or this one depending on which side you want to adjust. So that's really easy. And then just test it and readjust if needed. So according to the owner's manual, this belt here should only have a quarter inch of deflection if you push on it. And I've got maybe like half an inch, oops, sorry. So I should tighten that up a little bit. So to do that, what you have to do is come around to where it's mounted on the engine. So it looks pretty simple. There's two bolts here and then two on the other side. You loosen those and then you can loosen. Yeah, see that's a bolt there. You just uh, adjust this nut as needed and that'll slide that whole unit uh, in the direction that you need, whether you need it tighter or looser. So this piece here can go into here. And the idea of this is that it prevents you from sawing into your log stops. Uh, I'm gonna put it on for now at least. I think a lot of people end up not using these. I'm gonna do it for now while I'm still getting used to milling because good chance I will be likely to hit my my log stops so I'm just gonna put that like that so this does actually have to be turned inward or it would miss the log stop as you can see here boom it hits so there are the holes where your ruler is gonna go so the ruler here is going to go here like so so there's some holes I'm go around There's some holes there. They're already drilled through there. Um, they are pretty tight, so what you probably want to do is take your bolt beforehand and just turn it through so you know that you can get it. You might have to use a screwdriver. And then you can take your, your guide and screw it on, and then there's you'll put the nuts on in behind that wheel. So there's two plastic washers that go in between here and there, so Two on the top, two on the bottom as well. And I'll show you a little trick, courtesy of Darren Sherwood, on how to get the nut, the top nut. So, this one's here is easy, you can reach that one. Now the other one is above the wheel and there's not much room to get at it. So what you're gonna do is take your number 10 wrench, you can take some plastic wrap or saran wrap, Go like this, underneath, and then push that in. That'll hold it in place. Then you can put it up in there, it'll hold it for you. So we got the ruler here. So you're gonna take this piece here, slide it over top, and then 
sorry, put these two bolts through there and attach it. Easy, and that'll hold it and also give you your guideline. I forgot to turn the choke off. There we go. Listen to that puppy purr. Puppies don't purr. You get the point. That's great. So this is how your log dogs are going to look once you got them on. You got the dog thing through the rod and that just bolts down in there, not on the bottom. And the log stops. Self-explanatory, they just drop into here and then you can tighten them up there. Easy peasy.